Hello guys, it's Unders. I hope today is finding you well. So today, just a logic quick tip. I'm just gonna show you how we can use the channel EQ independently on left and right channels and also automate and do different things on the left and right without having to split your tracks up. It is possible to do this in the most recent version of Logic. Previous versions of 10 were not able to do this. So if you can't follow along, it's simply a Logic update. So I've just got this little loop here, literally throwing a break in, done a very quick reese with the ES2, which is this. And I just want to take that Reese and process the left and right EQ on it separately. So if we select the channel, it's obviously called a big Reese and we'll make that nice big obvious channel, see what's going on. So on the channel itself, if we click and go to channel EQ, we've got a stereo and dual mono. We're gonna use dual mono. So when we open that up, it looks like the channel EQ normally would, except right at the top here, We've got a little cog icon, left and right and couple. Now, if we choose left or right, they're gonna work independently on the left and right channels. If we choose couple, anything we do to one will affect the other directly. So if I was to pull down on here, we move to the left, we can see it has affected both. If I turn couple off and we're on the right here and I do a boost up here, go to the left, we see that hasn't taken effect. So that's a way to really quickly manipulate the left and right. However, we want to go one step further and we want to look at automating them, don't we? So what we're going to do, we're going to create two uh, sweeping like notch filters. So on the left here, we're just going to put this blue one over about the 2K marker there. And we're going to dip it down quite extreme, nine decibel, and really narrow the Q off to sort of 1.5. Then on the right, we're going to take the green icon, which is this one. I'm going to sit that right on 1K. And we're going to do the same thing here. So now on the right-hand side, we've got a dip at 1K. And on the left-hand side, we've got a dip at 2K, both with different points. Now I'll show you why we've done that in just a second. When we go back to the big Reese, if you press A, that's going to bring up our automation lane. And we're going to use this little arrow just up here to drop down. And we've now got two. And obviously, left and right, that's what we're going to set these to. So where it says read and volume, we're going to click on volume, and we're going to go down to the second channel EQ, and you'll see it says group A and group B. Group A is going to be left, group B is going to be right. So on the left, we chose peak four, and on the right, we chose peak three. So if we go down here, and if we choose peak four and frequency, we should see it snapped to two kilohertz for us here. If we go down to the next one, which was assigned to pan, we're going to do the same, channel EQ, group B. And this time we want peak three frequency, and that should snap to 1000 for us. Perfect. So we've now got the frequency points for each part of the EQ, and we can automate them as we see fit independently. So if you use the pencil tool, click in the automation laser to bring them in. And we're not going to do anything fancy here. We're just going to throw some automation in just so we can really see what's going on. So we're now gonna have left and right working independently. Let's make these cuts really extreme so we can really hear them. We just loop that first bar there. Yeah, so you should be able to really hear what's going on with those there. And that's just the way that we can EQ independently left and right. Really helpful for creating an extra bit of movement and width into things like a respace. Hope the tutorial was helpful for you. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you very much for subscribing.